Peterson here. You know what I'm doing right now? I'm about ready to do a pour. I've been doing pours for about three weeks and I really haven't had any luck with it. So I don't I'm, I don't know what's gonna happen with this one. I mean, I've had some luck with them, but well, it's been rough, you know? Uh, pours are something that you just don't know what's gonna happen. Every, every pour is different, every single one of them. It could be the humidity, it could be it's too hot or it's too cold. There's all kinds of stuff that can happen. So, uh, I think you're just at the mercy of the Lord on this. So I'm just, I've asked the Lord to help me with this. And I, I have a, a recipe here. And all these paints that I've mixed up, I've, I've mixed up, well, let me just show you real quick. If you had a, a glass like this, a regular 12 ounce glass, if you filled up uh, the paint to the first rib on the, on the glass here, you would have to add this much of the pouring medium. Now to do the pouring medium, you have to, first of all, on the first rib of the glass for a 12 ounce glass, once again, the first rib would have to be Elmer's glue. And Elmer's glue all is what you want to get. The rest of it all the way to the rib up on the top will be filled up with a thing called Flotro. And you can get Flotro at a lumber yard. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the place, uh, the De Home Depot. Uh, you can get Flotro, but get the latex uh, Flotro. Because that's, that's acrylic because all this paint is acrylic. So I've mixed up all of these paints with the Flotro, and I've also added about four to six drops of um, silicone. And I use a silicone spray, sprayed it into this medicine bottle, and I just uh, put six or four to six drops according to what I think is going to work. I have no idea if it's going to work or not. And here's a recipe that I wrote down because I think it's going to work. And I have two cups because this is a big piece. This is the top. Oh, I forgot to tell you what this is for. This is the top of a desk that I am donating for auction for a scholarship program for an art student. Now, wherever that person wants to go to school, uh, the the, R, the RAG, R-A-G, the, the Racine Art Guild, is putting out a scholarship fund and our, all of our tables are going to be auctioned off at the Starving Artist Fair. Uh, that is on August 6th. It's not too far away, August 6th, so come on over. Put in a bid and uh, mine is an old sewing machine desk. So the whole top flips up. So if you have a sewing machine, you can put a sewing machine inside of it. But if you want it outside, you can put a planter inside of it and you can have the top go up. Oh, it's gonna to be too cool. And uh, so let's get started with this. So what we have to do first of all is we have, we're gonna start off with some dark blue. And I've already sprayed my silicon or I dropped some of my silicon inside of here. Now this is what is called a pour. So I have to mix these up really good. And this is the first color that I'm putting in. And this will be my blue. And I'm also going to put it in this cup. And then the next color I put in is my turquoise. So I have to stir this up because the silicon uh, will stick, well, go to flow to the top. So every time you pour something, you have to make sure that whatever you're pouring is really stirred up really good. So that's what I'm doing here. So the next one, and I'm going to do this probably about 12 to 18 inches high. Just going to let it drip in there like that. Okay. The same thing with this. Because I don't know how much paint this is going to take. So it's better to have more paint than have less paint. That's the way I, I feel about this whole thing. Then the next thing, we've got the turquoise in there, and it looks pretty good. Now we're going to put some white, so I have to stir the white up. The white also has four to six drops of silicon in it. It's a lot of paint, so I don't know if the four to six drops is going to make it or not. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's a lot of paint. So here we go. And the reason that you do this high up is so it, it kind of creates layers of paint, right? It's really cool the way this works out. Um, I have a color here. That it's a, a metallic gold. I don't know how this is going to mix in with everything, but we're going to give it a shot. It's all experimentation because it never turns out the same way, ever the same way. 
we're going to put it in two different glasses and I bet you both of those glasses are going to be completely different. Okay, so then we got we got the white and then so now we go back with the blue again. We're going to add some more blue to it. And some more turquoise. And what I'm looking for on this uh, particular pour, I want to have like a reflection of the sky. Of course, it's not going to, it might be a pretty wild sky, but I want it to have a, to be a reflection of the sky. So after the turquoise comes uh, some more white. And then some more blue. I'm saving the black for last. And that's pretty much the end of the blue. <laughs> And then we're going with the black. And I haven't stirred this up yet. Give it a good stir. I hope I stirred the other ones up. Oh. Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, here comes the black. The color's beautiful. And now I got a little bit extra here, except for the blue, that I could uh, that I can use. So I'm just going to take my one of my sticks, wipe it off a little bit and just put an, an X in the middle of it. That's all I'm doing is just separating the paint with an X. So, we got everything in there, ready to go. So, how do we do this? Well, it's called a flip pour. How do we do that? All together, I'm going to have to do two pours. So, I'm taking the sheet of paper that's got my recipe on it, and I'm going to take one of these cups. Well, I better... Make sure I have two of them, so I might have to rip this down a little. I hope this works. If it doesn't, it's going to be a royal blooper. But everything will get done. So I'm going to take this, put this on top of here, and put it upside down real quick, and then pull the paper off like that. Oh, that looks good, huh? And then on this one, I'm going to take this one, and put it on top. It's just like when you're cooking a, you know, a cake or something, we have to flip it over. Flip it over like that. Okay, now we got all this good paint inside of there. Let's do a real quick one like we used to do when, you know, grandma and grandpa were at the table and you wanted to rip the, the tablecloth off. Let's do it. Oh, there's another nice one. You can probably save that. I might be able to sell that for $40. All right. I'm going to tap these down. I wish you could see this. I wish I had an overhead camera, but hey, you know, don't have that. Well, here we go. I hope you see this. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. I hope I got enough paint there. So now I'm just going to start taking this and moving this around so it kind of goes over to the edges. On this side and then towards me, and you're not going to see this part, but if there was an overhead camera you would. Alright, so basically that's what it looks like, see? Now we're just going to let that sit there. And we're going to see what happens. I might have to move a little bit off the edges here so that everything gets covered up. I uh, taped off the bottom of this so that the paint wouldn't leak through the back side. I figured the customer who buys this on auction can figure out what they want to do with it. If they want to make a planter out of it or even if they have a, uh, a, a sewing machine. And they want to put a sewing machine in there. That'd be so cool. You know, old Singer sewing machine? That'd be really, really cool. So I'm just covering up these these edges. Oh man, it looks for it looks good. It really does. It really looks good. Oh, I wipe my hands off. And then I'm gonna to hope to get uh, what we call cells, which is when we apply some heat, and I'm gonna apply heat with a torch, a butane torch. A lot of people that do pouring go out and buy a butane torch, which is similar to the what a chef would use if he's 
doing some baking and he wants to do something really fancy and he wants to just like burn the meringue, you know? <laughs> and uh, that's, you know, that's the kind of torch we're using. It's just a, a small butane torch. It's not like your husband or boyfriend or son has out in the garage where he's torching off a fender on a 48 Ford coupe or something. You know, it's just something like this. And it's about time to do that. So let's give it a shot, see what happens. I'm just holding it really far away. And what's happening is that silicon that's inside the paint is gonna start rising to the surface and do all kinds of wonderful, wonderful things that you have absolutely no control over. Absolutely no control over. Every time you do one of these pourings, no pouring, no matter what you do, it's the same color, it's the same temperature, no matter what you do, that pouring is never going to be the same as the one that's right next to it. And that's what's so cool about this stuff. Yep, there's a lot of cells forming. This is really cool. In just a little while, I'll show you what it looks like. And it's really important when you're doing this to have your table leveled out. And I, I do use a level when I do this. And I try to get it as level as possible. So what basically what this, what this torch is doing, it's bringing the silicon up to the top. And that pops these little bubbles, which brings more color up from the bottom. Not only that, but it also breaks all the air bubbles. And you're going to find, if you ever do this, that there's going to be lots of air bubbles on your on your paintings. So this heat also breaks all those air bubbles. Great. That's all I need. That's all I need. Okay, I'm going to take these gloves off and I'll show you what this looks like. All right, you're probably going to get a little bit of reflection from the light up above, but I'm going to take you in. I'm going to zoom you in like Star Wars on this just so you can see what it looks like. Try not to get my paint, my camera wet. I'm gonna take you down low so you can see what's going on here. Try to avoid any kind of glare that you might have in here. But you can see how nice this looks, huh? See, these are what are called cells, you know. Of course, we have a little bit of reflection in there. I'm trying to get that out of there. But look at that. Look at those nice cells. Look at how big that baby is. And look at how big these are getting. They're getting bigger as we're sitting here watching them. This truly is one of the best ones that I've ever done. I'm very, very happy with this. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Get in focus there, puppy. There you are. Yeah, the turquoise is coming through. Man, oh man. But what gets me is this white. This white that's going on here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's called lacy. And this is the first time I've really got something to do with lacy. I think it's so cool. So cool. So am I happy? Yes, I'm happy. I am very happy, and I hope you like it too. I'm going to show you tomorrow after this dries, and I'll put a, a coat of either resin or a clear lacquer or something on it, and I'll show you what I'm going to do to the rest of the painting. So we'll see you tomorrow.